cycle throughout America. Pot moved underground. In the 1970s, on the heels of the hippie era, President Jimmy Carter endorsed a nationwide decriminalization. But President Ronald Reagan agreed with conservative outcries that marijuana is probably the most dangerous drug in the world. And today, more arrests are being made and more narcotics are being seized than ever before. And America's first drug czar went after the marijuana business with unprecedented zeal and a blank check from the White House. Today, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency classifies marijuana alongside heroin as a Schedule I drug, meaning the harshest drug penalties apply and are enforced. U.S. law enforcement spends billions of dollars a year to combat it. Over 800,000 Americans were arrested last year because of it, almost 90% of them for simple possession. These types of arrests, along with mandatory minimum sentences and three strikes you're out laws, have added to an already overburdened prison system. Now, a hugely controversial loophole is pitting state rights against U.S. federal government. They are medical marijuana laws. California was the first U.S. state to pass a medical marijuana law in 1996. The intent was to give relief to deathly ill patients, those suffering from advanced stages of HIV, AIDS, and cancer. People like Robin Few. The doctor took one look at me. He said, you have lymphoma. Within a couple hours, had me in the hospital, and within a few days, I was doing chemo. So um, I was shocked. You know, I, the, the, I, I never thought of cancer. You know, how you don't, you don't plan on cancer. A vigorous and active life has been stopped with chemotherapy sessions. Hey. Hello, Dr. Abrams. How are you doing? Good to Her see oncologist you. is Don Abrams, okay. who for the past 28 years has seen firsthand yeah, how marijuana helps his patients. Deep breath for me. Cannabis is the only drug that decreases nausea and vomiting and also increases appetite. Mouth open. Also, I think uh, people sleep better and a little bit of euphoria I don't find is a negative thing in people that are facing uh, malignant diagnoses. With Abrams' recommendation, Few uses a vaporizer. It heats up the pot, releasing a gas, which is gentler than smoke. But the best part is yet to come. There's all this vapor in there. Takes a little while, can sit around and smoke on this baggie for a little while. <laughs> I never have nausea. I'm hungry all the time. You know, I, I, I feel like the more cannabis that I smoke, the less of the other, of the narcotics that I take. So that's been really helpful to me. They say I look better than I've looked in two years, and that freaks me out because I'm dying of cancer, you know. <laughs> so. Shamans, physicians, and pharmacists have dabbled in the notion of marijuana as medicine for thousands of years. But the relief patients feel is largely anecdotal. Marijuana's status as a Schedule I drug means that according to the federal government, it has no accepted medical use. The U.S. government strictly controls all American marijuana studies, and researchers who want to study cannabis must obtain it from this facility at the University of Mississippi. By some accounts, the supply is extremely limited and of questionable quality. 
and some scientists claim that if their research might show potential positive medical uses, the requests are rejected. It's a charge the government denies. But in other nations, getting cannabis to scientists is less complicated. Israel is among the leaders in medical marijuana research. From his lab bench in Jerusalem, Raphael Meshulam has fathered nearly two generations of peer-reviewed medical research. He first discovered THC in 1964. Cannabis, although it had been investigated, nobody had really isolated it in pure form, and uh, neither were all the other compounds uh, there. So I thought that it's high time that somebody should do that. For 40 years at Hebrew University, researchers study effects of THC and other cannabinoids on people and laboratory animals. Meshulam dissolves THC in an oil-based solution. In this form, measured doses can be administered accurately. Researchers here have witnessed promising results in the treatments of brain trauma, diabetes, cancers, and osteoporosis. 20-year-old Eyal Preisler underwent a bone marrow transplant a year and a half ago. Since then, his body experiences a chronic quasi-rejection called graft-verse-host disease. I am treated by the THC drops for two months already, meaning that I just started and I already saw changes. Whether it's the digestive system, the diarrhea that is gone, and my skin that was very hard is now softer and back to its original state. My appetite is back. It really increased the appetite, and I actually gained four kilos in the past two months. I need to gain a lot more weight to get back to where I was. Each dose that EL takes is as measured as any prescribed medicine. Most marijuana taken as medicine in America is not. Medical marijuana in the States means use of marijuana uh, against uh, diseases. Now, from my point of view, medical marijuana is not well defined. It should be better defined. If you take aspirin, you want to take 500 milligrams of aspirin. You don't want to say, well, I don't know how much I'm getting, 20 milligrams or 2 grams. I don't see any difference why one should have a different attitude when works with working with marijuana. Uh, and if marijuana can have anything between 2% and 20% THC, I don't think that this is the right way to do it. American medical marijuana laws are not well defined. Advocates say that today in California, there are more than 200,000 physician-sanctioned pot smokers and nearly 300 dispensaries. U.S. federal law enforcement believes this creates an atmosphere of overly permissive use and quasi-legalization. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Yourself? Good, thanks. I was looking for something that could help me with sleeping. Okay. Well, you'd want to go with your most indica.